live from Las Vegas, it's The Cube, covering Magento Imagine 2019. Brought to you by Adobe. Welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with Jeff Frick. We have been covering Imagine 2019 in Vegas all day today, talking all things e-commerce innovation, technology, the customer experience. Jeff, one of the biggest themes I think that we've heard today from all of our guests is how strong this community is how naturally it was developed in the last 10 years and how influential it is to delivering exceptional customer experience technology. In fact, Jason said without the community there would be no Magento. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's ingrained in the culture, it's ingrained in the DNA. I think, you know, there, doing some of the research, you know, there was people talking about the dark days of Magento as it went into eBay and apparently whatever that plan was it didn't work, and then out of eBay into private equity, out of private equity into now Adobe, and it sounds like the, the, the community's kind of been following along, and it, maybe they were holding their breath a little bit a year ago, but it sounds like they kind of got through that, that kind of concern knot hole, if you will, and kind of popped out the other side and realized um, there's a whole lot of opportunity that comes to Magento via being part of Adobe now that they didn't have before. So I think it sounds like they're good with it and, and they're ready to go and, and nothing but opportunity ahead. Yeah, you know, I think with any acquisition, and we, you know, we cover so many technology shows and we've been part of acquisitions before at, at different companies, they're challenging. There's always, I think, natural trepidation. I think it's just a natural response that anybody probably from a, an executive to an individual contributor level is going to have. But one of the things that came up so um, resolutely was how organic the Magento community has been developed over time that, like you said, as Jason was saying, without it there is no Magento. Not only are they influential, it's a very much a symbiotic relationship that I pleasantly, surprisingly, sounds like it's been integrated very nicely into Adobe, and to your point, they now are seeing, wow, there's a tremendous amount of technology and resources that we didn't have the opportunity to leverage before. Talking about the experience, the digital experience business of Adobe's, which is growing, grew 20% year over year, 2017 to 2018, on a very strong trajectory this year. A lot of opportunity to enable merchants of any size to have this really 360 degree of the customer experience and manage it with analytics and advertising and marketing and add the commerce piece so that they can take that marketing interaction and actually convert it to revenue. Right, right. I mean, look at Adobe. I mean, they brought in they brought in Magento, which we know uh, late last year. They also brought in Marketo at almost about the same same time, 4.7 billion dollars. So they're making huge moves, and I think it's a pretty unique situation where again they come from the creative, and now with the data and and a sophisticated platform, and you talking about the A/B testing again. It used to just be A/B. Now it's A/B times literally millions and millions of customized experiences delivered to the client, and then now, which I, I, again, I think really an interesting point of view is where then you bring the commerce to the point of engagement, rather than trying to use the um, engagement as a way to drive people to commerce. I mean, they seem really well positioned. I think they're going to really enjoy people like Accenture uh, and some of the other big system integrators that now are going to be you know, behind this platform. So it seems to be a, a, a fit Marriage made in heaven, it, it almost makes you wonder why Adobe was so late to have an e-commerce platform, which is the thing that kind of surprises me, I think, the most. Yeah, well, it, it also gives them the opportunity to compete with Shopify and with Salesforce Commerce and kind of harness this brand power. But you talked about something that we've talked about all day, and that's bringing the, the transaction and the commerce experience to me as a consumer, wherever I am, whether it's in shop, in-app shopping through Instagram, rather than you know, w delivering me a personalized experience, leveraging the power of these technologies to understand the right things about me as a consumer, to deliver me an experience that is frictionless, it's going to allow me to have a seamless experience. We talked about that with progressive web apps and how that's going to enable next generation shopping for merchants of all sizes to enable 
don't just engage me on my mobile if that's where I want to be. If you don't have the opportunity to convert me seamlessly to actually transact, there's a huge addressable market or gap in converting that to revenue, which Jason Woolsey also talked about, kind of thinking about next steps for Adobe and what they're going to be able to do to help those merchants capture in real time, leveraging the power of technology, emerging technologies like AI in real time to make that shoppable moment turn into dollars for the merchant. Right, a lot of great things. I thought it was interesting having TJ Gamble on and talked about co-opetition, right? Co-opetition is such a fundamental part of Silicon Valley and the world in which we live in. And he said, you know, if you're making fat margin, as Jeff Bezos loves to say, your margin is my opportunity you're going to compete with Amazon, but in the meantime, you got to compete with them. And so to enable integration into the Amazon platform with your, with your Magento store, the integration in the Google Shopping, integration into Instagram purchases, in-app purchases, I mean, these are really opening up the opportunities for these smaller retailers, mid-sized retailers, to compete in a really complicated and, and, and super hyper-competitive world, but now they can, again, focus on their brand, which we hear over and over and over, focus on their experience, focus on their community and leverage some of this best of breed technology under the covers across platform, across different uh, kind of modes of buying, because the other thing we hear over and over and over is you got to give people choice. You can't say no. So if they want to buy it through Amazon, let them buy it through Amazon. If they want to buy it through Instagram, let them buy it through Instagram. If they want to come to your e-commerce site, let them come to your e-commerce site. But, you know, and opening up all those channels for the merchant to be able to execute their transactions regardless of how the customer got to them or how, more importantly, they got to the customer. And you, you know, you, the SMB front is really key that you brought up because in the last year, since the acquisition was announced about a year ago and completed, I think it's September of 2018, there was not just concern from the community that we talked about at the beginning of the segment, but also the small to medium business, like, well, Adobe has a really big presence in enterprise. Is that going to be cannibalized with this acquisition of Magenta, who had such a strong presence with those smaller merchants? And you mentioned some of the things with Amazon and Google that we heard yesterday and today. I think really assuaging some of those concerns that the smaller businesses had, but also allowing these smaller merchants to sort of level the playing field and have access like the power of a branded Amazon storefront that allows a smaller business to get some differentiation, whereas before they didn't have that. So I think we heard a lot about that today and how uh, I think those smaller brands are probably maybe breathing sigh of relief that this acquisition is really going to enable them with a lot more tools, but not at the, you know, the cannibalizing what they have been doing with Magento for so long. Right, right. And some other fun discussions. I really enjoyed the time with Tina, talking about influencer marketing. It's, it's amazing how that uh, continues to evolve at a really fast pace, right? A derivation of, of, of professional endorsement, which is something we've known ever since uh, Joe Namath put on stockings many moons ago. But um, to see it go from big influencers to micro-influencers, uh, you know, how do you sponsor people to give them money, engage as a brand, and still maintain that, 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 that they legitimately like your product, use your product? I think it's a really fascinating space. To, again, to be able to purchase within that Instagram application, I think is really interesting. And then, and then a lot of conversations about the post-transaction engagement. You know, send them not one email, confirmation that your items are coming, but send them two. And really to, to, to think about lifetime value of the customer and engaging the customer via content and oh by the way, there'll be some transactions and commerce as well. I think it's really forward looking and, and really enjoy that conversation as well. I did too, I didn't know the difference between an influencer and a micro-influencer. And you kind of <laughs> infer based on just the name alone, but also how brands have the opportunity to leverage data to evaluate, maybe we should actually make more investments in somebody with a thousand followers, for example, and somebody with a hundred thousand because the revenue attribution or the website traffic lift that they're going to get from a micro-influencer could far outweigh the benefits financially than going with somebody, a celebrity or whatnot that, as you said, back to you know, Joe Namath and many decades ago. So that was interesting, but it's, a, it's also a good use of using data to build brand reputation, build increase customer lifetime value, but also get so much more targeted and really understand how to operationalize the commerce portion of your business and through whom, through which channels, you're going to see the biggest bang for your buck. 
Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really interesting times. You know this 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 idea that that the apps follow you. I mean, my favorite example is Spotify. Uh, super, super sophisticated app, right? I can be listening to my phone, I get into my car, it follows me, I go into my office, it follows me on my computer, I go out on my bike, it follows me, it, it stays the same state, and so, so for the commerce and the community to be able to follow you around is a really interesting idea. And again, it was Hillary Mason actually that, that first came up with the term that you know, AI and, 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 and good recommendations done well are magic and done poorly are creepy. I think it's, it's always going to be this interesting fine line. Again, I, I think the, the, the whole concept of you know, using old data and how fast you update it, and that's kind of the example. I've, I've been looking at tents, I bought a tent. I don't want to see ads for tents anymore, right? <laughs> it's time to see an ad for a sleeping bag or, or a camp stove. And, and these are really happening in real time. You know, we've, we've heard about Omnichannel, we've heard about 360 View, the customer ad nauseum. You've been in this business for a long time, but it sounds like it's finally coming together, and it's finally where we have the data, we have the access to the data, the speed of the analytics, um, and just the raw horsepower and modeling that we can now start to apply this real-time ML to data in flight to be able to serve up the not creepy, but correct recommendations at the right time to the right person. It's getting closer and closer to reality. It is getting closer, and as you were talking about that, one of the things that popped into my head is, not, you know, going from the creepy to the magic that is, you think, wow, is really leveraging this data and using the power of machine learning and AI a great facilitator, or is the, the bottom foundation order management? If you don't have the, or inventory management, if you don't have the inventory, you, it's great to have all these capabilities to transact in real time, but if you can't fulfill it, you're going to sink. Yeah. So Magento, with you know, some of their core technology of enabling this, really enabling the three, not just enabling the 360 degree customer view, but being able to fulfill it. Those are table stakes and game changers right. for merchants of any right. sense. And I think they do have to engage, I mean, they have to be brands, right? Because a commodity item, I can go get anywhere. There's got to be a reason to come. A lot of, of, of uh, conversations, not so much here, but at the Adobe Summit, in terms of the content piece, and having an ongoing dialogue and an ongoing content relationship with your client, now you can slice and dice and serve that up lots of different ways based on who they are and the context, but if you don't have that, you can't just compete on price, you just can't compete on inventory because Amazon is going to win, right? You can't stock, my favorite thing is, is, is shirt, shirt little pins in here. How do you stock those? You can't. They, they, they don't cost any money and you don't sell that many. Amazon can, so find your niche, you know, engage your customers, engage your community, and then there'll be some transactions that come along with this. And I think it's really reinforced it. I think it's probably really timely for Magento to be part of Adobe, because e-commerce, just purely by in itself, is going to be tougher and tougher to do unless you've got this deeper relationship with your customers beyond simply transacting something. Exactly, so I enjoyed hosting as I always do with you, Jeff, learned a lot today. And then excited to hear about what's next for this event, now that, that Adobe is uh, leveraging the power of well, we Magento. Heard, uh, we heard the announcements. Gary's going to make the announcement tomorrow, so hang out for the keynote tomorrow to find out more about Imagine 2020. We'll be there. Yes. 2020, because we'll know everything in 2020. We will know, that's right. I can't 2020 wait. 2020 insights. I'm waiting for that. Well, Jeff, <laughs> as I said, always a pleasure hosting with you. You too, Lisa. I brought the sea urchin necklace I like out. it, this I like just it. just for Jeff. It's making its appearance on theCUBE. <laughs> We want to thank you for watching. For Jeff Frick, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE live from Imagine 19 at the Win Las Vegas. Thanks for watching.